Day yesterday, the nation paused to remember our lost soldiers and one man who has immersed himself in our war history for his new book, Gallipoli, is Peter Fitzsimons and he joins us now. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Gallipoli is one of Australia's, mm. you know, defining historic moments. Did you learn anything in, in researching this that you didn't know or that we wouldn't know that would surprise us? Like most of us, I think I was raised on Gallipoli and I tried to get to the bottom and work out... For a start, how did we get there? And for me, the most stunned I was was trawling through the minutes of the British War Council. Where did the idea to go there come from? 13th of January 1915, Winston Churchill says, here's the plan. We're going to go up the Dardanelles, the Imperial Fleet. We're going to shoot at Constantinople. We'll wave the Union Jack. They'll give up. Everybody in, everybody in. The British Prime Minister, Herbert Asquith, that afternoon, he's 63 years old, writes to his 27-year-old lover, beautiful Venetia Stanley, and he says, my dearest darling, Winston's come up with the most amazing idea. I can't wait to see you tonight to tell you all about it and see if it meets with your approval. What? E exactly. I mean, the Australian Prime Minister didn't know about it until eight days after the They're event. Just going to check with the missus. Exactly. Make sure the missus is the okay. The other... <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I was stunned by that, and I was also fascinated how much the Australian soldiers respected the Turks, and the Turks respected the Australians. Yeah. So after a month of shooting at each other, their problem is there are thousands of dead bodies. They smell. They've waved the flags. Both sides come up and out of the trenches and walk towards each other in no man's land. And the Turks, the first thing they say to the Australians is, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? Why have you come here? To which the Australians try to explain, British Empire, we're doing our best. But the Turks couldn't understand that the Australians were volunteers, that they didn't have to be there. Whereas the Australians looked at the Turks and go, you bastards look a lot like us. Mm. You know, there was an instant empathy. And a few days later, the Australians are in their trenches and the Turks are there, and this package comes and lands in front of the Australians and mostly if a package is coming from the Turks it explodes. Yeah. It doesn't. They, they grab it and they open it up and what it is, there's a note that says a notre ero enemy to our heroic enemies and what it is is Turkish cigarettes. So the Australians hand them out. Not bad, you know, better than the camel dung ones coming from Egypt. <laughs> so, so what they do then is we've got to give them a present. So what have we got? The only thing they've got... Camel dung. No, no the only thing they've got <laughs> is cans of bully beef. So they wrap up the cans of bully beef and they have it for breakfast, lunch and dinner and they hoik it over. And a minute later, it comes back from the Turks <laughs> with a note. No more bully beef. <laughs> And so there was this, you know, they're all there at the behest of the politicians and the leaders, but well, they seems... actually respected each other. But there's so much history, there's so yeah. many stories like that. And, I mean, the book, look at that. That is a thick book mm. you have done your homework. Was there any editing? Did you, is there anything you cut out? You've know, probably added other walls oh, no, in here. Well, that... I tried to. Look, what I've tried you're, to do... You're talking about the movie by the end of it. <laughs> Funny you should say that. It is. I have tried to take it as far from Mr Smithers history classes, thank you. <laughs> and look, I don't want my history books to feel like Mr Smithers history classes on a wet Wednesday afternoon, staring out the window, trying to remember late dates and names. I want my stuff to feel like a novel, to read like a novel, to make it feel like you're there, but to be backed by 2,000 footnotes to say, this is what Real. happened. Yeah. So is it, is it written like you're speaking? Because you're really sucking us all into it. Yeah, well, I love it. I mean, I get, I get, I sort of, I'm, I don't know, I get, I get, I, I get a bit obsessed by it. And I sort of feel there was some Russian writer, Dostoyevsky or no, one of those boogers, who said, once <laughs> said, I have had the most wonderful day. I have spent the morning riding through the forest with princesses, the evening dining with princesses. The idea being that when you're writing, you're sort of there. And I suppose for me, just I feel like well, for yeah. about 18 months I've been at Gallipoli and respecting... I mean, the thing, the thing that most staggered me, the Battle of the Neck, the famous one, 7th of August, so there's four waves of Australian soldiers at 4.30am, 150 in each wave, whistle, they've got to cover 50 yards, they've got no bullets, they've got bay bayonets. OK, and the Turks are there with machine guns and the whistle blows... <laughs> And out they go and they are slaughtered, industrial slaughter. And they, the second, two minutes later, the same thing happens and out they go. Nobody hesitates. And before the third wave, the Turks on their guns shout at the Australians in the dawn, duh, duh, don't, don't. And then as John Hamilton's book documents, then one digger shakes hand with the guy next to him and he says, goodbye, Cobber, and God bless you. 
and out they go. And we lost 350 men in a few minutes. And what most stuns me about that, I wonder if we were there and the first two waves have gone out and they have been slaughtered, what would we do? And I don't know what I would do. And what should I do? Is it right to go out to your certain death? They did, but it's, I mean, there's stuff like that and the, eva the evacuation I loved. And Bob Hawke told me, I, I was at a Republican uh, lunch with him a little while ago, and Bob, you're getting nervous, you look you're like you're looking at somebody going, wind him up, wind him up. <laughs> Bob Hawke said to me, the most moving time of his whole Prime Ministership, 75th anniversary, they take back 53 diggers. They're 95 years old. They go to, they fly there, Qantas. One guy was blind, he hadn't seen since the First World War. He said this was the first plane he'd been on since a Sopwith. OK, that, that, they get to Anzac Cove, they get out of the bus blinking in the light and there's cheering and they look up and there's 4,000 Australian backpackers going, yeah, beauty! <laughs> and then they look and there, across the same no-man's land that they'd met the Turks 75 years earlier, is 103 95-year-old Turkish soldiers. And the two groups walk towards each other and the Australians put out their hand and the Turks brush the hand away and wrap them up and kiss them on both cheeks. Powerful story from <laughs> oh, both sides. Absolutely. absolutely. Your book, Gallipoli, is out now. Perfect time for Christmas, I might add. Well done with that. Well done. Would <laughs> <laughs> you please say Peter Fitzsimon? Thank you. If you have just joined us, here's what's making news this Wednesday, the 